In Jeremiah 23, verse 29, the Bible states, Is not my word like a fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? These are symbolic images, as God compares his word to both a fire and a hammer. But why fire? Why would God use fire to describe his word? I believe it's because fire has the power to purify, destroying impurities. For centuries, fire has been one of the oldest methods used to refine metals. Similarly, just as metals are refined by fire, our hearts, souls, and imperfections are purified through God's word. This is why God likens his word to fire. When we consider the word of God as a hammer, it's important to recognize that a hammer not only breaks but also builds, reinforces, and strengthens. God's word acts as a hammer that crushes evil and breaks down an unholy conscience. It is through the power of his word that transformation occurs. Engaging with God's word inevitably brings change. Romans 10 verse 17 tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Therefore, God's word as a hammer is not just a tool of destruction, but also one that builds and reinforces faith. Another aspect of God's word is that it is like a mirror, as James 1 verse 23 says, For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. A mirror reflects one's image, revealing flaws and imperfections. Similarly, the Word of God reveals who we truly are and shows us what we are called to be in striving to live like Christ. It allows us to see ourselves clearly and recognize where we fall short according to His standards. Will you choose today to meditate on the Word of the Lord? Will you make it a habit to dwell on God's truths? Have you noticed how God's Word takes on a deeper significance when you face challenging situations? When you're worried or anxious, perhaps about your finances, health, or other concerns, the Word of God speaks directly to those feelings. Philippians 4 verse 6 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. Or consider when you feel threatened or face something that brings fear. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love, and of a sound mind. If you're feeling unsettled or troubled in your heart, John 14 verse 1 encourages us, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. I encourage you today to get to know God's word deeply. Fill your heart with his truth. Read scripture as often as you can, memorize Bible verses, and meditate on them regularly. These are foundational practices for Christians, and the reason we should do them is highlighted in Joshua 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. The significance of God's word is also emphasized in Colossians 3 verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Have you ever wondered why God's word is so powerful? It is powerful because of its endurance. It has withstood the test of time. As Matthew 24 verse 35 says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Additionally, God's word has the power to cleanse and transform a sinner's mind and heart. As Psalm 119 verses 9 to 16 declares, How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart, that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I have declared all the judgments of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies, as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. When we face problems, confront battles, or find our backs against the wall, the word of God must serve as a source of reassurance. It ignites the fire of our faith, sparks our hope,
and gives us confidence that no matter what we face, regardless of the size of the enemy or the trials in our lives, we have divine and heavenly assurance through God's word. In Luke 4, we see Jesus in the wilderness, tempted by the devil. Luke 4 verses 3 to 4 recounts, The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. But Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. Verses 5 to 6 continue, with the devil offering Jesus all the kingdoms of the world. But Jesus replies in Luke 4 verse 8, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. The devil was persistent, trying once more in verse 9 to tempt Jesus by taking him to the highest point of the temple and saying, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. But Jesus firmly responds, quoting scripture again in verses 10 to 11, For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Notice how each of the three times Jesus was tempted. He answered the devil with the word of God. The devil knocked three times, and each time, Jesus responded with, It is written. Jesus was offered wealth, power, and the kingdoms of this world, but he was satisfied with the word of God. So, I ask you, people of God, how will you respond when the devil tempts you? When the enemy comes knocking at your door, do you have enough of God's word within you to resist and stand firm? To ensure that you do, immerse yourself in God's word, as it provides the knowledge and strength needed to resist, overcome, and be protected against the devil's schemes. 1 Peter 5 verses 8 to 10 instructs us to be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Now let us go to God in prayer. Lord Jesus, you are great and mighty. I pray that your word may be hidden in my heart and that I may live my life according to the principles and commands found in your word. Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit would bring God's word to life for me, and may it come alive within me. May your word be deeply ingrained in my heart. If the devil tries to tempt me, let your word rise up in me. If he tries to lure me with riches, fame, or anything this world has to offer, help me, Lord, to remember your promise in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13, which says, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, He will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Lord, it is in you that I find satisfaction and contentment. When I hunger, you are the bread of life. When I thirst, I will come to you, Jesus, knowing that my heart will flow with rivers of living water. Keep me strong, Lord Jesus. Help me to reject the advances of Satan and declare your word when never confronted by evil. I stand on your word because it says in Isaiah 41 verse 13, For I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, Fear not, I am the one who helps you. Lord, I thank you for such a promise. I will not fear, for my help comes from an almighty God. Even though the devil may work against me, I trust you to be my help. Though my enemies rise against me, I trust you to be my defender, Lord Jesus. Indeed, a thousand may fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not come near me, for I have Jesus Christ as my refuge. I stand on your word that declares in Psalm 27 verse 1, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Those struggles come in various forms. You, my Lord, are a stronghold in the day of trouble. I find security and assurance in your promises. For you are a God who has never lost a battle, who cannot be defeated. Therefore, whatever comes against me, I know that I have a strong and mighty God fighting for me. Father, 
together with everyone listening, we pray and declare victory in Jesus. We are more than conquerors according to God's word, and we are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. So now, Master, be praised and glorified. God, I thank you for hearing this prayer. It's in Jesus' name that I pray, along with my brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. Dear friends, the focus of today's prayer is all about our habits. Habits can reveal many significant aspects of our lives. They reflect our thoughts, our priorities, and ultimately, the state of our hearts. And our hearts are either in one of two places, aligned with God in His will and obedience to His word, or aligned with the world and in darkness. Often, when we speak of darkness, people assume it means evil rituals or witchcraft, but darkness is simply being apart from God. You don't have to be a bad person to be in darkness. You don't have to engage in evil actions. Darkness is just a state of being away from God. God is light. God is life. Jesus says in John 8 verse 12, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. That's why the Bible urges us not to conform to this world. The moment we conform, we find ourselves in darkness, away from God's authority and guidance. The Bible tells us repeatedly, do not fear. Why? Because fear has no place in Jesus. If you walk with him, you walk in light with a sound mind and a spirit of power and love. But if you walk in fear, you walk in darkness because fear cannot be found in the Lord. One of the most well-known phrases is, walk by faith, not by sight. But consider this, when you walk by faith, you see Jesus. When you walk by faith, God's word is a lamp to your feet. But when you walk by sight, you see only the world and its darkness. That is the true essence of walking by faith. Walking in the light of God, not the darkness of the world. So, where are your habits leading you? Are they guiding you to walk by faith and in the light of Jesus? Or are they pushing you to walk in the world? In darkness? Many people are unaware that their daily habits and routines can lead them into dark places. Darkness is not merely an evil corner in hell where bad spirits gather. You can attend church regularly, but if God isn't the top priority in your life, you're still in darkness. If God is not first, if there isn't a fervent desire to know and obey Him, you remain in darkness. What happens when God is not first in someone's heart? They may become controlled by their work, business, or pursuit of money. For them, life revolves around their career and worldly gains when it should be centered on the Lord. Some become slaves to jealousy and envy, constantly wanting what others have, driven by appearances and the desire for things that make them feel good. Be cautious about your habits. Be vigilant about where your habits are leading you. I invite you now, for the next few moments, to come before the Lord in prayer, asking Him to help us develop godly habits. May He guide us in cultivating routines that draw us closer to Him. As it says in Galatians 6 verse 9, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Don't grow tired of doing what is right each day. People of God, we must establish routines that are centered on Jesus Christ, and one of the most important habits we can develop is to commune daily with the Holy Spirit. The Amplified Version of Ephesians 5 verse 18 says, Do not get drunk with wine, for that is wickedness, corruption, and stupidity but be filled with the Holy Spirit and constantly guided by Him. When we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we are led by Him in all that we do. It becomes a state of dependency, not on ourselves, our resources, or our influence, but on the Holy Spirit, day in and day out. This is why it's vital to be filled with the Spirit. When we are, we become more sensitive to God's voice and more responsive to His guidance. The Holy Spirit enables us to read, understand, and enjoy God's Word in a way that we cannot on our own. So, make it your habit to spend time each day in the presence of the Holy Spirit, building a deeper relationship with God through His help, guidance, and leadership. Now, let us go to God in prayer. Dear Father God, I thank You, I honor You, and praise Your holy name. Thank You, Lord 
for being more than enough and for providing all that I need. I am grateful for the life, health, and new opportunity you have given me today. Lord, as I come before you, I ask that you help me be a believer who fully depends on you. May I be someone who is wholly devoted to you. I pray that the Holy Spirit would influence me daily. Ephesians 5 verses 1 to 2 says, Therefore be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. Lord Jesus, my desire is to imitate you when you walk this earth. The Bible tells us that you often withdrew from the disciples and from others to pray to God the Father. I pray for the same grace to model my life after the example you set. Help me to withdraw from the busyness of this world and to spend time alone with you in prayer. Let this become my habit. Lord, when you walked this earth, you showed compassion, love, and mercy to people from all backgrounds. You ate with sinners and loved those who were rejected by society. Help me to love others, regardless of their appearance, background, or circumstances. Help me not to judge others because of their sin. For I too am a sinner saved by grace, in need of your mercy and compassion. King Jesus, you are always about your Father's business, setting aside your own will to fulfill the will of God. I pray for a heart like that, a heart that prioritizes your will, Lord, over mine. Let me find joy in obeying your word and fulfilling the purpose and plans you have for my life. Ephesians 5 verses 15 to 17 urges us to walk carefully, living life with honor, purpose, and courage, shunning those who tolerate and enable evil, not as unwise, but as wise, sensible, intelligent, and discerning people, making the most of our time on earth, recognizing and taking advantage of each opportunity, and using it with wisdom and diligence, because the days are filled with evil. Therefore, do not be foolish and thoughtless, but understand and firmly grasp what the will of the Lord is. Father, help me to walk uprightly. Help us, as your children, to walk in wisdom and honor before you. Raise us up as faithful people, people who are neither foolish nor thoughtless, but who firmly grasp and understand your will. Make us obedient to your word. Lord, renew my strength daily. Your grace is sufficient for me. And each day you provide the grace I need to walk in obedience to your commands. Let my daily habits be beneficial to my soul and spirit. Let me not sow to the flesh, which is corrupt and will reap a corrupt harvest. Instead, revive my spirit so that I may sow into what gives eternal life. And I know that this is you, King Jesus, for you are the one who gives eternal life. I thank you, God, for hearing my prayer. I glorify you as a loving and caring God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. One of the greatest resources we have as Christians is prayer. Prayer is our lifeline, a powerful tool that allows us to reach heaven's throne and gain God's attention. Throughout the Bible, Many men and women access the power of prayer in various situations. For example, 1 Chronicles 4 verse 10 tells us, Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. In 1 Samuel 1 verse 10, Hannah, in the bitterness of her soul, prayed to the Lord and wept. When Hezekiah fell ill, 2 Kings 20 verses 2 to 3 recounts that he turned his face to the wall and prayed, Remember now, O Lord, I pray, how I have walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart, and have done what was good in your sight. And the Lord answered his prayer. Jonah prayed to God from the belly of the fish, Jonah 2 verse 1. And Paul and Silas, imprisoned, prayed and sang praises to God at midnight. Acts 16, verse 25. Do you see the pattern? Hezekiah, on his deathbed, prayed. Jonah, deep within the sea, prayed. Hannah, in her deep anguish, prayed. Jabez prayed for blessings. Prayer is essential. And the Bible offers these different examples to encourage us that no matter where we are or what situation we face, God hears us when we pray. 
whether underwater, at life's end, or facing great struggles, God is faithful to hear. So I encourage you to pray, for prayer still works. The Lord still hears, and He still answers. His word says, Call to me, and I will answer you, and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we give you praise and honor. We glorify your name and thank you for your goodness. Please give us grace in our prayer lives and strengthen us to pray with fervor, boldness, and faith. The Bible tells us that while on earth, Jesus prayed. He prayed in the morning, often separating himself from those around him just to pray. I ask for the same discipline, Lord. Give us the heart of prayer, and may it become a habit, a routine, and a lifestyle. May we be believers who instinctively turn to you in prayer, no matter what we face. Father, we know that a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian, disconnected from the only source of power. You, I ask that the Holy Spirit be our strength, helping us to pray diligently and stay alert, free from distractions. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the victory in your name. Let us never leave the door open to the kingdom of darkness due to a lack of prayer. Let us never let our guard down in this area. Ignite an unquenchable desire within us to pray, making us prayer warriors committed to maintaining a close relationship with you. Acts 2 verse 17 says, And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Pour out your Spirit in our lives, Lord Jesus. I pray that you revive our prayer lives and birth a passion for prayer within us. May we not miss your presence as you pour out your Spirit over our lives and homes. May we be believers sensitive to the Holy Spirit's voice, never too busy with the world to miss a divine appointment with you. Lord, may our hearts always put you first, and may our passion be for the things of God. Be glorified, magnified, and lifted high, King Jesus. I bless your name, and thank you for hearing this prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.